If you look on the western coast of Mexico, in the state of Nayarit, you will notice these very strange parallel lines, which go miles up the coastline. And when I got a comment by Mr. X 168 to check this area out, I immediately knew I had to make a video about it. Because it looks like such an interesting feature, and I was immediately wondering how it formed. So in today's video, let's take a look at how this formed, and also other examples of this same formation. So this formation is what is known as a strand plane, or a beach plane, and it is comprised of hundreds of parallel beach ridges, or ridges of sand. And something interesting about these strand planes is that they are progradational coastal features. And this essentially means that instead of the coast eroding away due to wave action, they are actually expanding. And something I find really interesting is that this technically makes strand planes a form of river delta, because they are primarily formed of sediment from rivers, just using different processes to make formations like this. And because strand planes are progradational features, that means that the ridges that are the closest to land are actually the oldest and mark the oldest coastline. So this is not only a way to measure the previous coastline, but it can also be a way to measure the sea levels, depending on if the ridges are higher up in elevation. In this case, roughly all of these ridges are exactly the same in elevation, so the sea levels here had not changed all that much. But now that we know what this is, how did the beach ridges form in such parallel lines? Well, this is due to multiple depositional and marine factors. So the first step in creating these beach ridges is the sediment, and these sediments almost always get into the area through rivers. So now, once the sediment is in the main body of water, a few different coastal processes occur, which turns it into these long ridges. The first of these is longshore drift, and I already talked about longshore drift in my previous video, check that out if you want a more thorough explanation, but I will briefly explain it here. So longshore drift occurs when waves are moving onto the coastline at an angle, and this angle causes the sand on the shore to move up at that angle and then back down, and this creates a zigzag movement of the sand along the coast. But also, some of the sediment gets into the longshore current, and this longshore current is what quickly moves the sediment along the coast. So essentially, the longshore drift process essentially ensures that these ridges are very long. So now that we have all of the sediment along the coast, the waves then push it up to form these ridges. And this can occur during times of strong winds or high tides in the case of the ocean. But once you have one ridge here, this becomes the new coastline. And all of the steps that I previously mentioned, the river deposition, the longshore drift, and this wave action are still occurring. And so this keeps building the beach ridges off of one another, creating the many beach ridges of a strand plane that we can observe. So those are the basics of how a strand plane forms. But let's specifically talk about this Nyrit strand plane and some other interesting strand planes. So this Nyrit strand plane is one of the largest strand planes in the world. It has more than 250 beach ridges going from the coast inland. And not only is it one of the largest strand planes, it has been one of the fastest growing. The oldest one of these beach ridges started to form only about 2,000 years ago. This means that this entire 7 miles of coastline has arisen in just the last 2,000 years, and I think that is pretty wild. So this begs the question, how did the Nyrit strand plane grow this quickly? Well, it is all due to its unique positioning along the western coast of Mexico here. This strand plane is located near an active continental boundary, and this means that it is located right next to a bunch of uplifted mountains. And this causes the rivers that feed the Nayarit strand plane to pick up a lot of sediment. And in particular, these rivers are the San Pedro and Santiago rivers. So when these rivers feed out into the ocean, they deposit all of their sediment they have gotten from the mountains, and this sediment is then picked up via longshore currents heading north-northwest along the coastline. And this of course moves all the sediment so that it can be formed into the ridges of the Nyrit strand plane. 
Now something else that's interesting about these sediments that comprise the Nayarit Strand Plain is that they are not only from these rivers. Some sediment has actually been scraped off the subducting Pacific Plate and also moved into the longshore currents. Another thing that is interesting about this Nayarit Strand Plain is that it finds itself right next to the Nayarit Mangrove Swamp. And this causes many of the inland ridges to be flooded and filled with mangrove trees, which just creates an extremely interesting looking terrain. Also, can we talk about how cool this photosphere is? I mean, these strand plains are probably one of the coolest coastal features. And I know I've been focusing on specifically this part of the Nairit strand plain, but this strand plain continues for many more miles up the coastline. It is just slightly less clear that there are those strands there without the mangrove swamp, but you can still see how the farms follow the different ridges. So this has been the Nayarit strand plain, but I also want to talk about a few other strand plains in this video that I found interesting as well. So the next group of strand plains is found all around the Great Lakes of North America. And if you look around the Great Lakes, you will find many different strand plains. The first one we are going to look at is actually near Chicago. However, unfortunately, this strand plain has been heavily developed, and thus only a few sections of this strand plain remain. But if we look at some of the parks around this southern shore of Lake Michigan, you will notice these strand plain features. As you can see at this park, there are these strand plains. And it is estimated that there were around 150 different strands of this strand plain coming out from the coastline. Now what makes these strand plains in the Great Lakes particularly interesting? Well, as I mentioned earlier, strand plains are usually formed as expansions of a river. However, in this case, there really isn't a river that would be depositing enough sediment to create a strand plain this long. So how did this strand plain form like it did? Well, it all has to do with glaciers in the Great Lakes. So here's a map of the Great Lakes 14,800 years ago. And during this time, all of what we know as the Great Lakes today were covered with large glacial sheets. However, if we move to 12,500 years ago, we can see that these glaciers had retreated. And as they were retreating, they left behind a lot of glacial sediment or glacial till. And these glaciers kept retreating and leaving behind even more glacial sediment in other regions. And so now that we have all of the deposited sediment in the Great Lakes, we have to have a way for them to form the beach ridges. And that is all due to differing water levels. So after all the glaciers retreated, you can see it formed a giant lake named Lake Algonquin, which is essentially today's Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, and Lake Huron, all connected due to higher sea levels. And if we look in the south here by where we see these strand plains, you will notice that the water levels are higher than they are today. And so this is where the first of the beach ridges were formed. Through the same process of strong waves due to there being pretty strong winds on the Great Lakes, the beach ridges were formed at the point where the water level was. And as this water level kept lowering to the modern levels, the beach ridges kept forming at the spot where the water level was, causing there to be many beach ridges on this southern coast. But the strand plains in the south of Lake Michigan are by no means the only strand plains in the Great Lakes. Let's take a look at some other examples. So the upper peninsula of Michigan is filled with many strand plains. And this is due to the upper peninsula essentially being completely flooded due to the higher water levels. So let's take a look by St. Ignace, Michigan. And you will see these many different bays with strand plains coming from it. And some of these stretch far out into the land. For example, here we have a strand plain that stretches about two miles inland. And so the interesting thing about the strand plains in the Great Lakes is that we can use them to observe where the water level used to be. So as you can see along this coast, there is basically no spot where there isn't a strand plain. And so what this shows you is that there wasn't a river depositing sediment, there was just even glacial sediment in essentially the entire lake basin, which all became strands. And here is a spot where the beach ridges go about two and a half miles inland. Now let's take a look at one more spot on the Great Lakes with very interesting strand plains. So this is the northern shore of the Thumb Peninsula of Michigan, 
and these strand planes might be my favorite among the Great Lakes strand planes. This is just because they contrast from the landscape so much, and you can see how the coast has curved over time. So in this spot, you can actually see how the coastline was once just a small bump, but then as the water levels started to retreat, you can see how it became curved into a point. And I just think this is so interesting to see, especially because on the ridge portions of the beach ridges, there are trees, whereas in the swale section, there is wetlands. But those are all the strand plains that I'm going to cover in the Great Lakes. But now I just want to look at a few more interesting strand plains across the world. So the eastern coast of Brazil also has many strand plains, and these strand plains formed in largely the same way as the Nayarit strand plains, just at the mouths of rivers which deposit sediment. And this coast of Brazil has probably some of the coolest angles of these strand plains. The place where this is most prominent is down here by Caravelas. And you can see how these ridges have expanded over time, from some of the oldest ridges, which are far inland and even behind some rivers, and then they curve slightly more towards the modern sea, and then in this point they have gone from going like this to like this along the modern day coastline. Now I know we've been talking mostly about the Americas, but they are by no means the only place where we see strand planes. For example, this tip of Latvia is essentially one giant strand plane. You can see how this tip has expanded over time from just a curved coastline. And here along the coast of Mozambique, you can see many beach ridges going far inland in this case. I mean, you can see beach ridges all the way up here, and this is around 18 miles from the shore. So that is really cool. But those are all the strand plains I'm going to cover in today's video. Here is a map of all of the strand plains, and the ones with numbers represent the number of beach ridges in that strand plane. So I encourage you to take a look at some of these. And strand planes are just such an interesting looking coastal feature that surprisingly have not been studied all that much. So who knows, maybe when I go into university, strand planes can be the thing I focus on. But that is going to be all for today's video. If you learned something new, please subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.